Okay, good afternoon and welcome to the decision session for environment and climate change um, on Wednesday the 10th of November. So going through the agenda, first item is declaration of interest. There are no declarations of interest. Second item is the minutes. I've read the minutes, they're true and accurate, so happy to sign them off. Want me to do that now? Sure it is. There we go. Thank you very much. Third item on the agenda is public participation. We have two people. Can I ask? I have got, I did have a note, sorry about that. First speaker is Councillor Pete Kilbane, talking on items four and five. Councillor Kilbane, would you like to take a seat? I need to sit somewhere near the moment. Hey, good to go? Yeah. Okay. Um, we welcome the work that officers have undertaken uh, to ensure the council maximises reductions in its carbon emissions. Uh, that said, this report is, by its own admission, uh, presents a partial picture. Uh, by excluding scope three emissions, the council is falling well short if it wants to undertake a comprehensive and honest assessment of its overall carbon impact. Our concern is that the rhetoric is not being matched by the reality when claims around 2030 carbon zero target miss out a major element of our carbon impact on the planet. In fact, the administration is in danger of deliberately misleading the public over this target. The technical challenges of measuring scope three are acknowledged, but to ignore them in its net zero target means the council is not counting up to 70% of emissions caused by the city. So for example, we could say all of York's roads are in grade A condition if we don't count certain potholes. Well, that would be clearly nonsensical. That would be cheating. The same applies with carbon emissions. To put it into perspective, the report calls emissions accounting for just 3.8% of the city's total. The scope three work is therefore essential. So we need to know whether a specific piece of work has been commissioned with the York and North Yorkshire left on measuring scope three emissions. And if so, what time scale has been put on it? Scope three emissions are important because they usually uh, are the greatest share of the organization's carbon footprint by a significant margin and also where an organization has a lot of influence. So while it may not be the makings of a successful Lib Dem leaflet, a scope three emissions audit is far more important in telling our residents where the council really stands on its carbon impact. Trying to play down scope three emissions is exactly the kind of greenwash that leads to public, the public to lose respect for politicians. We need more honesty about the challenge the city faces if it is to become genuinely carbon neutral. This means we need politicians to be serious and to be prepared to tell the truth to residents, not massage the figures in order to claim successes that are really failures in the context of the climate crisis. Finally, on the air quality report, it's positive to read the, of the improvements to air quality during the pandemic and national lockdowns, even though we'd obviously prefer never to have heard of COVID. But what of those improvements it's clearly too soon to assess, but it feels uh, like the city is returning to how it was before, failing to capitalise on any gains made. The government has rode back on its initially bold statements around the prioritisation of active travel, and unfortunately, it looks like the City of York Council is taking the same approach. And linking back to the emissions reports, despite what you've said in the past, Councillor Widdison, about buildings being the major carbon contributor, which is correct, Transport is a major contributor too, but we've seen no action on the council policy of removing non-essential vehicles from the city centre and no appetite for a robust local transport plan. Until that changes, we cannot take this administration seriously on air quality nor the climate crisis. Thank you. Okay. Many thanks, your contribution is noted. Ms. Catherine, proper would you like to sit? We have three minutes. Yep. I'm Catherine Crocker and I'm from Fishergate. About 25 years ago, I attended a Fishergate ward meeting to complain about the air quality in Fishergate. My son had just been diagnosed with asthma. And at that time, at Fishergate Primary School, one in seven children had inhalers. Now, 25 years on, I want to see the monitoring system that was introduced as a consequence of the ward meetings that happened then. And the, and the data used that you've been collecting, particularly during COVID in 2020, to show that the air quality did make a difference when we had less traffic. 
Vehicle traffic is responsible for 50 to 70% nitro nitrogen oxide, dioxide emissions. Widespread improvements in air quality were observed during 2020 when the traffic was significantly reduced. So the Fishergate monitoring station recorded a reduction of 27.8% of NO2 measurements in 2020. But the World Health Organization has moved on since we first introduced that uh, monitoring system. And it now reflects the knowledge that we have that uh, particulates and nitrogen dioxide are harmful. So at Fishergate, the maximum mean NO2 concentration did reduce to 29 micrograms per cubic meter in 2020. But the WHO guidelines should be 10 micrograms per cubic meter. Electric vehicles would help on this. But at Fishergate, there's an annual mean, mean particulate pollution that did reduce in 2020. But again, it was well above the WHO guidelines. Electric vehicles, I'm not going to go into the details of those because that's a bit complicated. Electric vehicles will not make much difference to this. Particulate pollution is as a result of brakes and tyre wear. So the best way to reduce particulates is to reduce the number of vehicles and congestions on the road. Particulate pollution is a serious illness and particularly vulnerable are elderly and children. On Fishergate, in the route to the Central York, two primary schools are situated on the roadside to the routing. So I think now the City Council should be using all these monitoring stations, using the data that they find, and actually making a positive move to reduce traffic congestion and number of traffic in the city centre. We've got to improve our air quality and, and emission reduction must be possible in York. The local transport plan should reflect this. Funding for out of town parking, incentivizing people to use electric buses, that means pricing mechanisms have got to be properly managed. And with your own report, using your own data, you should be able to make a difference to walking, cycling, and electric transport. And by using your own data, we'll be able to see an improvement over the next years to come. I don't want to be here, and I won't be around in 25 years, but I don't want to be around coming here complaining about air quality again, when you're actually collecting the data and you've got within your power something to do to reduce it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to our public speakers. So the next item on the agenda is the corporate emissions report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's the corporate emissions report. Sean, would you like to send your report? Yes, thank you, Councillor Whitteson. Um, so this is the first time that City of York Council have produced a uh, emissions report of the direct emissions associated with our corporate activity. Um, what it does is it identifies uh, a baseline for where our direct corporate emissions come from. Uh, over 50% of our corporate emissions come from our fleet. And the good news is that we have, over the next four years, a programme to transition all of our vehicles below three and a half tonnes from combustion engine to electric, which will have a significant positive impact on uh, our corporate emissions. The other significant area of emissions is uh, gas consumption for heating of corporate sites. And we identify an action within this report to produce decarbonisation, uh, heat decarbonisation plans for our highest consuming buildings, uh, which will also present a pathway to accessing public grant funding through the public decarbonisation scheme. Uh, our switch to purchasing 100% renewable electricity in April 2020 has, has had a positive impact on our emissions uh, and other actions are identified in this report, including behaviour change campaigns for our staff um, and uh, uh, further improvements through our uh, retrofit programme. The other thing that's identified from this report is that the council's direct corporate emissions account for only 3.8% of the city-wide greenhouse gas emissions. Um, 
which shows that uh, we can't achieve our net zero ambition by ourselves. We need the whole city uh, to deliver towards that ambition. The recommendation in the report for the executive is to uh, approve the corporate emissions report and to uh, approve the recommended actions in this report. Many thanks for the report. Um, you can consider the recommendations and actions approved. I am very impressed that we are, are managing to reduce our emissions at the rate that we are doing so. And even more impressed that we have identified what is in our control to change. So we are less than, the council is less than 4% of the city's scope one and scope two emissions. We're doing our bit and the event that you, you and your team and the Climate Commission organised this morning along with Steve Secker is working on how we also reduce the emissions from all the buildings across York, which account for 60% of the emissions. So together we can all get there in the end, but we all have to recognise our own responsibilities where we can influence and where we can actually action. So many thanks for the report. As you said, it's the first one that's been produced and a fantastic step forward. Thank you. So you're on again because the next report is uh, York Citywide Emission Inventory, which I've probably stolen a couple of things from. So apologies because I've mixed the two. They merge into to one. The issues are, are similar. Yeah. Um, the, the corporate emissions report was the first one that we produced as a council. This citywide uh, emissions report is the second one that we produced as a council. So we have a, a bit of a trend we can reflect back on, on last year, but it's important to take stock um, of where, where our emissions are coming from. The report shows that over 60% of emissions, direct emissions across the city are generated from our buildings, uh, about an even split from our homes and other buildings. Uh, and the vast majority of that comes from, from space heating and hot water. The other significant contributor to our citywide emissions is transport, with just under 28% contribution. Uh, and emissions also come from, from the waste uh, and, and industry within York. Um, there's a small change this year to last year, a small positive change, but citywide emissions reduced by uh, just under 2% between 2017 and 2018, which is uh, the most recent data that's available to us and is the time period that this report relates to. We do know that there's been lots of activity since then that have, have had an impact on citywide emissions, uh, but we don't yet get that from the data. It will take time for that uh, to come through visibly. Uh, the executive member is asked to uh, know the content of the emissions inventory report and approve its content. Yeah, as I said on the previous report, more than happy, I, and in my head you're very correct, Sean, I've merged the two because I see both as part of the same opportunity to make a difference. So many thanks, lots of hard work gone in, lots of work going in and making us move in the right direction. Our influence is growing and our residents have shown that they wish to participate. So all I would ask is if everybody could get behind this, please, if you can, move to a green tariff. If you can, get your boiler service so that it's as efficient as it possibly can be. And if you can, insulate either your loft or your wall cavities and look on the council website on the climate newsletter and you'll find links to where you can possibly get funding for those activities. So once again, many thanks for your report. Okay, so on to the third report, um, which is about air quality and the annual and our annual status. Yep. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. Um, we might be joined by Mike Southman in a few minutes. He's, he's on the bus, so <laughs> fly in at, at, at any, any moment. But I, I can outline the report. I can outline the report anyway. Um, so yeah, this, this report uh, outlines the latest air quality monitoring results for York. And uh, as, as you can see, there's, there's widespread improvement across the board uh, in York in 2020, uh, reduction in emissions from traffic, and um, no doubt helped by the COVID lockdowns, but um, air quality has been improving for years uh, in York and there's no reason why it shouldn't, shouldn't continue. So it is a good news report without, without doubt. Uh, the report outlines the plans to continue those improvements. Uh, 
the uh, local plan, transport plan, and the climate strategy should all keep things moving in the right direction. Um, you're asked to note the report and the um, uh, continued improvements in air quality. Okay, many thanks for the report. Um, duly noted. What I'm really, really pleased about is if you look back to 2012, which is when we really put our shoulders to the wheel with this, the reductions have been fantastic. Yes, we have the odd blip. Yes, there is one bus stop area in York that does not meet the recognised guidelines. But apart from that, everything else is moving in the right direction. The pandemic and the, the reduction in traffic go, gave us a snapshot to where it could go. And I am delighted to see that the work is in here to continue that journey. So this work has allowed us to, to um, pull down funding for the last mile intervention into the city for deliveries. I don't know why I use the word intervention for deliveries into the city, which is the most polluting mile and which is the most expensive mile for vehicles. If we can do something about that, then areas like Dillygate, Fishergate, Bootham, the absolute centre of our city, the air quality will improve even further. So many thanks for your report and many thanks for the hard work that's gone into it over the last 12 months and the previous years. Thank you, Councillor. I'll share that with the team. Excellent. Uh, the final agenda item is urgent business. I'm unaware of any urgent business. So therefore, I will consider this meeting closed. Many thanks for your participation.